You're listening to episode two of the TPL cast, the unofficial podcast of the People's League of Hell at Loose. I'm your host, Tritium, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the results of round two and the current standings. Next, we'll hear from the 1st Infantry Division about how their match against SUDT slash 504D almost resulted in a forfeit. And we'll also hear from a league official about how disputes are handled and what the final ruling was for that 1st versus SUDT slash 504D match. And we'll hear about what caused Devil's Brigade slash Cerberus to forfeit their match against Berserk. Now before we move on, I just want to let you know that I'm planning to bring on some guest co-hosts in future episodes. If you have a decent microphone, it doesn't have to be super professional or anything like that, and if you have some ideas for an episode, leave me a comment or a DM on a Discord, and I just might bring you on. So that being said, let's get on with it and talk about the results of round two. So looking at group one, due to dropouts from 508P and Baker's Dozen, 83AR and TFMC were awarded automatic wins this round. Next, KRC defeated Merck 4-1 in an offensive match on Carantan. Now keep in mind, on offensive, the attacking team, which was Merck in this case, has to capture all five objectives in order to win. Check out the episode description for Caparzo's coverage of this match. So currently, KRRC and 83AR are tied for first, while Merck and TFMC are tied for third in Group 1. Looking at Group 2, the 11th defeated Void in a Warfare match on St. Mary Glees, 5-0. Frank has video coverage of this match, which can be found in the episode description. The 1st Infantry Division defeated 504D in a Warfare match on Purple Heart Lane, 4-1. This was a tough match that almost didn't take place and we'll be talking about that a little later in this episode. Check the episode description for a link to a video of my perspective from this match. Unfortunately, Devil's Brigade slash Cerberus had to forfeit their game against Berserk in this round, and so that counts as a 5-0 win for Berserk. We'll hear a little bit about that match later on in this episode as well. So in Group 2, the 1st Infantry Division are in 1st place. Tied for 2nd are the 11th, Berserk, SUDT slash 504D, and Void. Rounding out the group in 6th place is Devil's Brigade slash Cerberus. Moving on to group 3, HLLE faced off against WRTB, and WRTB came away with a win, 4-1, in a warfare match on St. Marie Dumont. The 7th defeated 50A, 5-0, in an offensive match on Kharkov, and 15PG won a best of 3 against 32ID slash 7th Cav. Their first match was offensive on St. Marie Dumont, and their second was offensive on Omaha Beach. So for Group 3, the 7th and WRTB are tied for first place, 15PG and HLLE are tied for third place, and 32ID slash 7th Cav are in fifth place, with 50A rounding out sixth place in Group 3. One thing to watch out for uh, going forward regarding 32ID slash 7th Cav, it seems like that coalition has been split. And so 32ID is marching forward on their own. I'm really interested to see how they fare going forward. As for the 7th Cav, they're now registered as hirelings and can help your team if needed. So looking at the overall season standings, tied for first, we have 83AR and 7th. Tied for third, we have KRRC and WRTB. In fifth place, we have the 1st Infantry Division. In sixth place, we have Berserk. Tied for 7th, we have Merck, HLLE, and SUDT slash 504D. Tied for 10th, we have Void, the 11th, TFMC, and 15PG. In 14th place, we have 32ID slash 7th CAV. Tied for 15th, we have DBRG slash CBRS and 50A. And tied for 17th place, we have Baker's Dozen and 508P, both of whom have dropped out, of course. Now, I mentioned earlier that the match between the 1st Infantry Division and SUDT slash 504D almost didn't take place. I felt like there were some lessons we learned with how that match played out, so I reached out to both teams to talk about it. While I reached out to several members of SUDT slash 504D, I wasn't able to get them to come on the show. Being that the 1st is my own clan, though, I was able to find out what happened from their perspective. So here's that. Hey, 
thanks for uh, taking a, taking the opportunity to sit down and talk with me about uh, about round two. Um, I know round two didn't go super smoothly, but um, you know, well, we'll talk through it. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, Trill is an admin with the first and uh, True Power uh, is here as well, and he was the commander for our uh, round two match. How's it going, y'all? It's going good, guys. It's going good. Happy to be here. Good. What's going on? All right, so uh, let's get into it. How have uh, things gone for the first in the league so far? What's your What's been your opinion? Um, I think we've been doing surprisingly well. I, you know, by myself, I you know hold ourselves in high regard, and I think we are a very talented group. But uh, you know, I'm happy to be two and zero at this point. So I think you know been going well i mean we've had some hiccups i think it's a learning experience for everybody because we weren't in the test league season um but yeah no i think it's going pretty well how do you think true uh i think it's gone well uh so far you can't really ask for much better than we uh than we've kind of done so far i think the match against the 11th honestly um it was so competitive i think it could have went either way and it really set the bar for us in terms of what we need to expect against teams we've never played before um what we need to do better how we need to play um and how we should be communicating with one another when uh games are getting really sweaty and tough and i think it's a real positive for the league and all clan matches to come yeah that that seems to be um pretty consistent feedback that I've heard that the, the level of play uh, is really high in the league. Um, it seems like a lot of people are pretty satisfied with that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, it's, you know, I'm sure there's been, you know, plenty of sweaty matches around the league so far, you know, going into round three. So in round two, uh, the first was facing off against 504 D slash S U D T. So it was a coalition have has the first played against them before i don't believe so i i I don't remember ever playing them before i think we might have ran into them in a couple like uh pub matches but gotcha so going into this round kind of kind of blind on the opponent oh for sure yeah we didn't you know exactly know what to expect but we figured if we you know stuck to our game plan we'd be okay gotcha so um in in this round, there uh, there seemed to be a little bit of an issue that occurred, and uh, I'm kind of hoping that we can kind of dig into that a little bit. Um, first, I want to ask uh, a little bit about the scheduling process. Um, how did that go? The scheduling was decent for this round. It seems with the availability of clans, uh, you know, we are a a large percentage of our clan is like working professionals. A lot of us have families. Um, So, you know, Saturdays are usually not the greatest days for us. Uh, So we were trying to work around. We usually give the clans, you know, six out of seven days of the week that we could, uh, you know, potentially play. And we always kind of get pushed back and we end up having to kind of concede and play Saturday Uh, with SUDT and the 504 they were, you know, they accommodated us a little bit and we were able to schedule well the first, uh, the first attempt on the Friday. Obviously, we had uh, some hiccups, to say the least, with, um, you know, the actual event. Right. But uh, I'll let True, because True had the front seat to that, so we'll gonna let him get into that a little bit. So when clans get together um, for a match, generally try to have some sort of, like, communication beforehand. Um in terms of okay we're going to be looking for this server we're going to add each other on t17 or xbox psn whatever it is um and and i'm not blaming anyone on um either side for totally for the like the issues that we were having um i think what the the main problem comes down to is um console players not having access to uh private servers i I think we're that's like the main issue kind of comes to But basically, we found a server. Um, I think it was, I don't know where the server location was right off the hop, but we got our full team in, 50 v, like pretty close to 50 v 50. Everyone was in, getting ready to go. We were ready to go, but uh, both teams had really high ping. And we were were completely okay playing it. 
we were like, hey, we it's, this is like nine, nine, nine after nine o'clock on a Friday. Like we're not gonna be, be it's gonna be really hard to find a US East, US West uh clear, open, empty server at this hour. So we were happy playing it. Um day now 504 said he said, no, we can't do this. This ping is absolutely whack. Um we can't really drive. Um their guys were lagging out, so um eventually said okay whatever we'll 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 try to find a new server actually they found a new server actually fairly quickly after all that got all of us in i think the, the match we all got in was some sort of warfare but the the problem was i'm like okay so we're gonna try and burn burn again for warfare to get more of our guys in and uh the first burn occurred it was an offensive mode and so we're like oh crap okay so we got to burn this again uh, the second one was another burn for because it was an offensive mode. I think it was on Ramagan, and then and a yeah, burning that guy. one was. And then the third one was, uh, and then the third burn because usually get three burns was uh, Omaha Beach, I believe. Omaha Beach. Yep, just correct. Offensive mode. So I think I think we were going to be running up the beach, but for for whatever the case um we were we were trying to communicate with them they were kind of trying to communicate with us I, I think also the problem too is they're a coalition of two clans so they're they're trying to kind of discuss amongst themselves what the best course of action was if it's going to be um playing through it or for burning again um anyway there, there was kind of a, a bit of a communication breakdown and we didn't really get a, like a clear answer but eventually they said okay we're going to burn this again and then, of course, like the fourth burn we get in is like Stalingrad offensive, <laughs> which we had already course, agreed yeah. beforehand to not play Stalingrad at all. And we were trying to burn for warfare, um, and which was really frustrating, not not just for us, for everyone. Because um, at this point, we're well over an hour of burning um, between finding the first server and um just finding the second server and then burning through all those games like like it's a lot of time out of everyone's day and night with their lives to be oh yeah wasting for sure time these matches. so it, it's really frustrating for uh for us to do so what, what ended up happening was uh okay we'll, we'll we'll reschedule it we'll play this stalingrad match as a friendly um because if you guys don't know, the Stalingrad on console is just really laggy. Everyone, like, I always lag out on that map. <laughs> I yeah, don't know what you guys are. I consistently yeah. always bug out. And I know they had a lot of issues with that, too. Um, but it, it, it became really, uh, like, kind of an angry atmosphere, I think, with, between the two of us and frustration. But I, I think it all comes back to, is like, the lack of privacy um, I wouldn't say it's anyone or any team's fault, particularly. I think it's just the collective frustration of the offensive modes, trying to burn for it, and unable to find that uh, match that we both satisfy both satisfied with that we could play. Yeah, there was that. That was definitely, I think, the main issue with it. Um, you know, no one. You know, our, our kind of temperatures got high a little bit. I think you know, there's a lot of confusion going around as to what had happened. Um, before the Stalingrad match, we were on Omaha, as True said, on uh, defensive. And from all indications, and we th this was another issue th that there was communication in a voice channel, in the league scheduling thread, and direct messages between us and the um, you know the commanders and leaders of the SUDT and 504. Um, so going into Omaha, I was like, okay, this is it. We're live. We're ready to go let's get like let's go like we're going uh and then you know maybe five minutes into the match it was oh this is a burn so we were kind of like okay uh i thought we were playing i don't know understand quite what's going on but you know then i look back and you know we're just not going and then with stalingrad obviously on each side after five minutes we lost like half of the xbox players we lost our recon squads uh, we lost a couple of the tank commanders. We lost a bunch of squad leads on each side of it. So it got like, okay, this is like frustrating. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Yo, I, how I, I, I lagged out. out. Yeah, you lagged out. You were commanding. <laughs> so like there was a lot of uh, like uncertainty of what was going on. And I'm not 100% sure who 
threw out the idea to reschedule. Um, it wasn't in the chat for the uh, People's League thread for the scheduling, so it was kind of like it got like it got a little ugly for a little bit. Um, but I think it definitely taught me that we have to have every single thing in writing, and all communication has to take place in that scheduling thread. Just so you know, the league officials, uh, Herc, and all of that could uh, you know keep an eye on it and keep us honest. I guess. Ultimately, what was the decision that that was made? So I know I know that this match was a wash, right? The decision was made to mm -hmm. reschedule it. The problem with that, though, was that the round had very little time time left, right? And so a decision had to be made by the league officials. What was that decision ultimately, and what did you think about it? Um, the decision basically was we had a roughly 48-hour period um, to reschedule the match and hold the match, or we both, you know, essentially could have taken losses. Um, you know, I think on our end, we were able to uh, rally everyone together to get a good amount of signups for the league. Uh, unfortunately, SUDT couldn't do it and weren't willing to reschedule. 504 stepped up and, you know, we're able to get the guys in uh, in time so we could do it the next day. And, you know, I was kind of impressed that we were both able, you know, to reschedule and turn it around so quickly and actually get the match in. Um, so, yeah, and I think it went more smooth, too, on the second day. I wasn't there, but uh, from what I gathered, it went a little uh, smoother with everything. But, um, yeah, I think the I think it was fair. It was just the timing of it, you know, the last week of round two, last weekend of round two, rather, um, you know, it is what it is. We had to get it done. So, and, you know, we were able to do it. What was it like trying to get a, uh, a team together so quickly? Oh, I mean, you know, luckily <laughs> we, we did lose a lot of people who weren't able to do it last night and a lot of, you know, leadership uh, people weren't able to, uh, but, you know, we still have a good group of guys and girls. So we were able to, uh, you know, get, you know, a pretty good amount of signups pretty quickly. We opened it um, to, on our SNCOs early. So we were just, you know, like who's available. And, and I thought it was relatively easy. True. Do, do you think the same? Yeah, for us, um, we were pretty frustrated with the night before. Um, so to get everyone back together again, uh, the same kind of timeline, the nine o'clock on a Saturday, um, people are busy. So we weren't completely sure if we were going to have enough. But uh, within a couple hours, like, we had enough signups and it was okay. And I would like to thank and give a shout out to the 504 for being able to play the match. Um, it would have been really unfortunate if we, if we didn't get the match in and if we both had to take losses. Did rescheduling uh, kind of change how you had to plan for the game? It, it did in terms of roster. So, so we kind of prepped for our matches. Um, in terms of rostering, who's doing what, who's going where, how we're coordinating with one another, how we're prepping, who's to play like, um, different roles in every squad. Um, but now, in a, like in the short time frame, you have to make a completely new roster with some new SLs, some new players that weren't signed up for the pre previous match, and then a bunch of players weren't able to play the the next, like the Saturday night match. So it's a it's it's a bit of a schedule like a roster schedule like nightmare for kind of putting the team together. It, it it's all about the prep, being able to kind of give an outline of what everyone's doing, who's going where, and uh, how we're going to play the game. And how how did the match go for the first? Well, it went well. Um, the five hundred four, I will say, really had um, great flanks. Once so we capped mid first, and they uh, they had a tremendous flank from the bridge. It was on Purple Heart Lane, which is uh, not the easiest map to navigate around. But they had some really good flanks. Um, they always had constant pressure on us, um, but we were able to get the win. I think we we ended up capping the fourth point, maybe 30, 30 minutes left in the game. Gotcha. Yeah. So it it, it took a while. We were you were holding middle for a. a good amount of time for about then. an hour yeah and uh did, did the 504 throw any curveballs or anything um I, th I think they did a lot of things really good they were kind of i think they struggled a bit against our armor um but their their armor was hev heavy gunning down our middle point they were always suppressing us uh which was really 
very effective. And they got some they got some OPs behind the point. Garrison's up as well, which uh, we obviously had to deal with. <laughs> really quick, who are you most looking forward to playing in our group? In our group, uh, I would I think the clan that I was originally looking forward to the most was the 11 just because you know they are heavy hitters and we you know haven't really played them so i just you know wanted to see what uh you know what they bring to the table i guess so that was the one i was the most excited for um we are playing void next week i'm also pretty excited for that match or not next week but the week after i am pretty excited that you know we do have a long history with void you know that was like one of the clans that we were playing uh last year when the game really first started taking off uh, so, you know, there's kind of a shared history there that will be interesting, even though, you know, it's not quite the same void that we saw last year. Yeah, I agree. Um, never having playing, never have played the 11th or 504 sled team before. Uh, it was really interesting to see, like, kind of how they navigate and how they, uh, how their game plan kind of flows and goes up against us. But uh, play, playing void is going to be interesting. We, a year ago, when like the game is new to console, uh, we had some really, really tough games against them. Um, so that's going to be a really exciting game coming up. Last question here: Do you have any favorites for who winds up in the last bracket this season? Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, clans that you kind of expect to be there. Um, you know, the seventh KRC, uh, WRTB, uh, us. You know, and I think I think that's going to be the bracket, but we'll you know we'll see. It's, you know, things change. Uh, any clan could be beat. Any clan could win. So uh, I'm interested to see what ends up happening after the first uh, round of the season. Yeah, um, for me, I, I've said this for over a year. I think the seventh are kind of on that top pedestal, and then the step down is everyone else. I think they kind of have it. Uh, th- they're the standard for excellence sweaty uh clan matches <laughs> they're really tough but anyone could be beat um wrtb krc like a lot of these clans they're all really tough and on any given day any given map any given um point you know anyone can be had so it's, it'll be really exciting to see how it all plays out yeah 100 percent. i forgot to mention hlle they're also uh you know pretty heavy hitters so i think they'll probably do pretty well in this season as well well, uh, th- hey, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me and uh, have this interview yeah, and kind of talk man. about you Anytime. know what 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 all happened. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, Seth. Man, thank you or Tritium. I'm sorry, you could edit that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having us. So, thanks again to Trill and True Power for taking the time to do an interview. I also reached out to Demon from the Devil's Brigade to get an idea of how the league officials handled the situation between the first and SUDT slash 504D. Demon's been a league official since December, so let's hear from him now. All right, well, uh, thanks for sitting down with me, Demon, and taking the time to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, this issue that kind of cropped up. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. So before we kind of get into this, uh, really quick, I just kind of wanted to ask you about kind of your motivation for signing up for League Official. Uh, what led to that? Of course. So what led to that was basically me looking at uh, the fact that I have been in the Hellnet Moose sort of console scene now for over a year at the point at which I also signed up. So I thought that my knowledge and experience on the game and in the community itself would lend to helping to make decisions that might actually you know require someone who has the experience in running uh, or being in the competitive scene amongst clans so i thought if i sign up i can at least try and lend such an opinion and experience in helping decision making and the way that the league sort of moves forward Awesome. And uh, have you been involved in uh, resolving any disputes so far this season? So there hasn't been many disputes at all, really, this season. It's actually gone quite smooth. Uh, The only notable one is the one recently between the first and 504 Devils and SEDC Coalition. Gotcha. 
can you describe uh, a little bit just generally like how the officials try to go about resolving some of these things? Sure. Um, so when, uh, for example, like this recent issue that cropped up, immediately it was brought to all officials' attention and all officials were asked to basically take a look at the evidence given at the time and to, you know, hash it out. Basically, we all um, f tried to form an opinion from of ourselves and then sort of go back and forth with each other and see what everyone else thinks, sort of gauging sort of different perceptions that someone might have of the uh, evidence given. And uh, through the night, more evidence was given in uh, relating to conduct from both plans. And so that meant, meant that over time, while plans were asking for a decision straight away, it's never that simple as within a few hours, opinions had changed due to actually once again, you know, twice, three times going over what had been said, what videos were um, given in evidence. And it, help, it <laughs> helps you to form uh, an opinion based on the context. So, um, but the, the main way that we go about it is basically sitting down, having a chat with each other, going over what has been given um to us in context and then just sort of bouncing off of each other what everyone thinks so there isn't just one leading voice or the first two three people that throw an opinion and suddenly they're the ones that are ran with or um, like like a mob mentality or the decisions are made so quickly that people that jump in later on discord who didn't see the things originally don't um, get left out essentially that well, opinions are um, collectivized. And do you feel like the officials are pretty good about being impartial about things? Very much so. Everyone remains very professional. Everyone doesn't try and shut down other people's opinions. You know, everyone really works together to actually get other, you know, each other's perception uh, and opinions on the matter. And making sure that we're all pretty much in either in you know, a full agreement across the board or a large majority agreement. So getting into the uh, first and 504D slash SUDT issue, what was kind of your first impression when you initially looked at the situation? <clears throat> so when I initially looked at the situation, my opinion was that it seemingly was a uh, failure of communication from both sides uh, in terms of the burning of matches, the finding of servers, of which I have also experienced myself. So I understand how uh, crucial it is that everything runs smoothly in the searching of a server, the filling of a server and the timing of all such things. So everything tries to remain as fair as possible with the come with the conditions that we have to work with on console with no private servers. But my initial opinion was that, again, there was this seemingly was not the greatest of communication from both sides. Um, so there was possibly, by the looks of it, too many representat uh, representatives involved trying to uh, get things rolling and then uh, people uh, sort of getting very irritated with each other when there needed to be the stipulations uh, of the match that were agreed upon uh, carried out straight away. And also a slight lack of understanding of why the stipulations are so important. So in which case, my original opinion was that both teams uh, need to either reschedule the match or they face a forfeit on both sides because it had been left into. So basically, because we have a two week period and the game was left until basically a couple of days before the two week period was set to end and then rescheduling was called, the, the officials are then left with a difficult decision to not have games overrun into a uh, next week of uh, round, say round three, say from round two. 
So it was the original opinion uh, by myself anyway. Both sides should concede a forfeit unless they are not uh, unless they are able to reschedule and get the game played as soon as possible. Gotcha. And by the time the the officials had um, come to you know the point where they ultimately need to make a ruling, did your opinion change at all? What did you feel like the outcome should have been? And ultimately, how did the the officials make that ruling? Yeah, so I made my opinion that both sides should be forfeited unless they're able to reschedule, as mentioned. And quite a uh, quite a lot of league officials were agreeing with this notion at first. And then once evidence was given um, in relation to a rule breakage from 504D slash SUDT side of there being clan members basically using artillery to uh, kill first infantry division members and the evidence was there, it was hard to overlook the fact that there had been a rule breakage uh, from that clan side, a loss of control of their members and leading to the slowing of burns. And this rule breakage led to me forming the opinion that if the game could not be rescheduled and played out, that the first infantry division should be awarded the win rather than both teams receiving a forfeit. But uh, still, as someone who um, in other league formats, I've always, uh, it, from other games, working in uh, leagues in other games, I've always felt like actually trying to get the game played rather than just dishing out forfeits is a better way to add legitimacy to a season as it plays out. Anyway, my final opinion and the final opinion of most officials, which was then voted on and uh, the majority voted in favour of said ruling, was that the game should be tried to be rescheduled. If it cannot be rescheduled by the end of the period, then the first infantry should be given the W. And so um, switching gears a little bit, my understanding is that something kind of similar may have happened between Devil's Brigade and Cerberus and Berserk. Is that right? Um, in the first uh, week of round two, uh, DBRG and CBRS uh, tried to play against Berserk and it, it seems afterwards I had found out that Berserk had had a uh, restructuring of their command leading to people that were clan representatives not actually being the ones that were calling the shots and coordinating the troops in game. So I ended up communicating with a essentially a quote-unquote middleman, you could say. So while I was trying to get answers in game as to how we were going to progress um, with the server search, I was not getting responses because they were in communication with the people that I ideally should have been communicating with, who were the ones calling the shots, the commander, etc. So that was frustrating. And then when we found a server, the server had already been filled before we were even able to uh, get out of a blueberries party and whatnot. So this was all very frustrating. It was a uh, it was quite the breakdown in communication and misunderstanding from both sides about how things were supposed to go in the general course of service action, server feeling and so forth. And then what happened was is we finally managed to get a server uh done that was we ended up going to back so again i was speaking to the person who i was told was going to be the rep that i need to speak to they then agreed that we should go to a backup server region so i said okay so that's my eu uh, side of things which again my clan is literally made but like, i'm literally me and one other person 40 people and that would have been EU, so it wasn't exactly a advantageous uh, server region for us. We're not EU mainly, like there's only a couple of people out EU, which is me and one other guy. So we went and found an EU region, 
as we were trying to work with Reserts and Build Act, apparently I was getting word that they were not happy with the fact that it was an EU server, even though their representative had told me that it was, you know, we were going to a backup server region. So again, communication was breaking down on their side between me and the rep, and it was just not a good experience. And then we couldn't find the warfare, and per our stipulations, we rescheduled for the next week. So when the rescheduled match came around, uh, what what happened there? So basically, uh, this has nothing to do with Berserk on the second week. We actually had a lot of people not show up or uh yeah essentially so my dbrg side had 30 people um basically uh, rostered and signed up maybe even 31 or so approximately 31 and unfortunately cerberus um which is unlike them were only able to field six guys or six or seven guys total which brought us to around 36 to 38 approximately. So that should have been good, but we went and got the hireling help of 7th Cav just to help us fill numbers against Berserk who had numbers um, got larger than ours. And what ended up happening is when we had finally filled the server, we were actually beneath 30. That is DBRG and CBRS included. We had had quite a few people would not turn up and a couple of people uh, believe that they didn't want to wait around an hour and a half to get a game going, which is unfortunately one side of having not having private servers is how long it takes to get an actual official game going. So we had a couple of people dip, which were, which is not ideal at all. So in the end, we ended up uh, not being able to uh, meet the 30 required. Um, we did have a couple of people drop connection and a couple of people trying to get in to help fill 27 out of 30 who signed up last minute, but we were just not able to get them in. And um, so without having to hold up the game <clears throat> any longer, it was put to the officials uh, with the help of Hercules, what should be the ruling on that? And the league officials remaining impartial, I am a league official myself, um, but they still said it is against the rules, you're supposed to have 30 people and then hirelings can make up whatever another number. So it was uh, ruled in favor of Berserk, of course, so I immediately put in the result chat that it was forfeited in favor of them. We still played the game out, just for uh, all intents and purposes, shits and giggles, but it it was uh, put in favour of them. It was not a uh, favourable outcome, but that was down to our members, nothing to do with Berserk. Gotcha. And how does this how how does that result uh, affect your team for for this round and going forward? Uh, it's, it's not good at all for our team. We uh, we lost our first game against Nano for the and SEDT, um in an offensive match. And this time round, uh, we couldn't even make up the numbers in the end, which it, which again is unlike us. We've been able to, uh, so in friendly matches and also round one, we were able to field pretty much up to almost 50 people. Like, seems like we're trying to get rid of as many blueberries as we possibly can to try and get as many as we can of the guys in. It was quite a shock. Uh, how it leads, uh, it puts us in a very, very difficult position in trying to get ourselves into the uh, at least top four of the groups of qualifier. Considering out of all three groups, we are in the only group that has zero dropout, so everyone is playing for points and no one is getting a free pass. Right. Well, all right. Uh... Before I let you go, is there uh, any advice you have for uh, other teams going forward to kind of help them have a smooth experience? Most definitely. My advice to any uh, anyone who is in the uh, league currently and is worried about scheduling matches or going forward how to do it, how to do so, the best way is to basically 
find out who is going to be the official from the other clan side that is calling the shots, who is the one that is giving the green light to their troops to fill the server. Make sure there is an agreement in place that before you, when you find the server, that you're not all of a sudden having loads of members from either side clan jump in. Clan members need to understand that they are not they are not supposed to join the representatives until they are adamant that both sides have parties that you agree on how you're going to go about getting the server region, who's going to be communicating with you. You need to make sure that both teams give the green light at the same time, making sure that both teams are cleared from parties, for example, so both sides can fill at the same time, hopefully at the same rate. And anyone who's looking to get into the league in season two, my advice to them would be to make sure they are absolutely certain that they can confidently field at least 30 players and that mainly they're looking to field at least 40 to 50 because if you have dropout, you're going to need at least 30 people, otherwise you do not meet the stipulations, whether you have a hireling or not. Which we found out the hard way, but as an official, I already knew. So that would be my advice to future clans or uh, clans that are playing now. Definitely good things to keep in mind. Hey, thanks for sitting down with me, Demon. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope, you know, things go uh, better going forward for DBRG and Cerberus. And uh, look forward to see how everything goes. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. So big thanks goes to Demon for that interview as well. I think there were definitely some good things to learn from this round. So that's it for this episode. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'm really interested to know what you'd like to hear going forward in future episodes and any of your ideas or suggestions you might have. You've been listening to the TPL cast. Until next time, Tritium out.